Around 70,000 years ago, something happened to the human species, something so catastrophic that it nearly wiped us out. Scientists estimate that the entire population of Homo sapiens may have dropped to as few as 1,000 individuals. 1,000. That's less than the average high school. That's how close we came to never existing. But the real mystery is not just that it happened. It's that we still don't know why. This is the story of the greatest near extinction event in human history and the questions that still surround it. When we think of extinction, we usually imagine dinosaurs or prehistoric mammals disappearing over millions of years. But our species, modern humans, almost vanished in a geological blink. The evidence lies in our DNA. Geneticists studying human populations discovered something strange. We are far less genetically diverse than we should be. For a species that spans the entire planet, our genetic differences are surprisingly small. This suggests that at some point in our past, our population crashed dramatically. This phenomenon is known as a genetic bottleneck. It's what happens when a species is reduced to a very small number and then begins to grow again. The result? Most of us are descended from a very limited group of ancestors. So what caused the bottleneck? One of the leading theories points to a massive volcanic eruption, Mount Toba, in present-day Indonesia. Around 74,000 years ago, this supervolcano exploded with a force 100 times greater than the biggest eruption in recorded history. It sent ash and debris across the globe. The skies darkened, temperatures dropped, plants died, animals followed, and humans? We were likely caught in the middle of an ecological nightmare. Some scientists believe this event triggered a global volcanic winter, a kind of sudden, short-term ice age. Crops would have failed. Ecosystems would have collapsed. For small, scattered tribes of humans already struggling to survive, this could have been apocalyptic. But here's the strange part. Not everyone agrees. Some archaeological evidence suggests that human populations in Africa, India, and even Southeast Asia continued relatively undisturbed during this period. Tools, settlements, and signs of daily life don't seem to disappear. So if Toba wasn't the cause, what was? Other researchers suggest disease. A pandemic, long before the word existed. A deadly virus could have swept across early human populations, leaving only the smallest groups alive. But again, there's no direct evidence. Still others point to climate shifts. Between 70,000 and 60,000 years ago, the world went through wild fluctuations, droughts, cold snaps, and rapid changes in vegetation. It's possible these changes isolated human groups, broke trade routes, and destroyed food sources. There's even a theory that the bottleneck wasn't caused by a single catastrophe, but by a combination of many smaller ones. A perfect storm of bad luck. And yet, despite all these possibilities, the truth remains elusive. We don't know exactly what happened, but we do know that we survived, and that survival changed us. Some scientists believe that this near-extinction event may have shaped the way our species thinks. It may have accelerated cooperation, language development, and social bonding. When you live in a world where every member of your tribe matters, communication becomes essential. And when the survivors of that bottleneck spread out again into Europe, Asia, and eventually the Americas, they carried with them not only their DNA, but the legacy of a second chance. A fragile, improbable continuation of our species. Today, we are over 8 billion strong. We've built cities, explored the stars, and decoded the atom. But just 70,000 years ago, we were hanging by a thread. It's humbling to think about. Because no matter how far we've come, we are still the descendants of survivors, of a species that almost disappeared. And the fact that we don't know why only makes the story more haunting. But there's something even more fascinating about this near extinction event. It happened just before one of the most important turning points in human history, the cognitive revolution. Around 60,000 to 50,000 years ago, something changed in the way we think. Evidence shows a sudden explosion in symbolic behavior. Humans began creating art. 
carving tools with precision, developing language, building social hierarchies, and possibly even believing in abstract ideas like gods or spirits. Some scientists think that the genetic bottleneck wasn't just a tragedy, it was a filter, a pressure that selected for intelligence, adaptability, and complex communication. In other words, the catastrophe may have helped shape modern humans into who we are. Think about that. The near extinction of our species might have been the spark that ignited our creative and intellectual leap forward. The collapse could have been the beginning, and yet we don't know for sure. Because this event left behind almost no direct trace, only fragments in our genes and scattered clues in ancient soil. We may never know exactly how many people survived. We don't know where they lived, how they held on, or what they saw disappear around them. All we know is that they did survive, and from that moment on, the human story changed forever. Their descendants would go on to populate the world, shape civilizations, build languages, develop science, art, and culture. Everything we are today, every discovery, every invention, comes from a lineage that almost ended before it began. So next time you look around at the modern world, remember, we are the result of a second chance. We are walking proof that survival is not guaranteed, that existence is fragile, and that history is often written by those who barely made it through. The mystery of how humanity nearly vanished and how it returned remains one of the most haunting unanswered questions of our past, and perhaps one of the most important reasons to protect our future. But perhaps the most haunting part of this story is what it says about our vulnerability. We tend to think of extinction as something that happens to other species, ancient, primitive, or poorly adapted. But in reality, extinction is the rule. Survival is the exception. Over 99% of all species that have ever lived are now gone. They disappeared through natural disasters, environmental collapse, climate shifts, or simply because they failed to adapt. Homo sapiens was not exempt from these forces. We just got lucky, maybe incredibly lucky. That realization forces us to ask, what would have happened if we hadn't made it? What ideas would never have been born? What art, what languages, what philosophies would have remained unspoken? Would another hominin species like Neanderthals or Denisovans have taken our place? Would the planet look completely different today? Or would intelligent life have disappeared from Earth entirely, leaving only silence? This isn't just a historical curiosity. It's a mirror held up to the present. Because although we now live in a hyper-connected, globalized world, the threats haven't disappeared. Climate change, pandemics, nuclear weapons, and artificial intelligence are all risks created or amplified by us, and they echo the very fragility that almost ended us once before. Our technological power has outpaced our wisdom. And yet, the lesson of our near extinction may be exactly what we need to remember. That survival requires awareness, cooperation and humility. The survivors of 70,000 years ago may have carried that instinct with them. A deep-rooted understanding that life is precious, unpredictable and never guaranteed. Maybe that's why storytelling became so important to us. Why we passed on myths, drew on cave walls, built monuments and wrote histories. Maybe we've always sensed that one wrong turn, and the story ends. But it didn't. We're here. And that single fact, that improbable, almost impossible fact, is more than a mystery. It's a responsibility.